Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab. And what I got here is two Obin carbon fiber travel tripods. Now these were given to me courtesy of BH Photo. And you can actually win these tripods in an upcoming giveaway. So the link for that giveaway is below. I did another video on the giveaway. So check that video out. This video is gonna be reviewing these tripods. I'm gonna show you how these tripods work, how they differ from one another, and you know, what you get for the money. So the first tripod we got here is the Obin 3535 and it's a super ultra compact solution. That's like the beauty of this tripod. It folds up to 12 inches at its smallest size. When it's at its maximum height, it goes to 52 inches. Now the payload for this unit is a maximum of nine pounds. If you're gonna use something big and heavy like this, this is a little bit too much weight for this small tripod. This larger one would be better suited for a camera setup like this. This one is the Obin 3535 and it goes for about $180, all right? And it's carbon fiber. They do make an aluminum version, which weighs a little bit more, but it's $120. So it's significantly cheaper if you get the aluminum version. So this tripod weighs in at only 2.5 pounds. That's like a featherweight tripod, extremely lightweight. And like I said, it folds up to 12 inches and it comes with this cool little bag, you know, and you can see how small this bag is. It fits in there no problem. And you could fit it in a, you could easily fit it in a travel-on suitcase, um, a backpack. I mean, it's really that small. And it also comes with this highly versatile ball head. The larger tripod is the Obin 3581, and it goes for $499, but it has a maximum payload of 26.4 pounds. So this guy can support a lot of weight. This tripod goes to a max height of about 68 inches. So that's very tall. That's like to the top of my head pretty much. Both of these tripods also turn into monopods. This leg here on this tripod unscrews and the center column comes out and you can turn it into a monopod. That's a great feature. Both do the same thing. Now these legs also have multiple adjustments. They have like preset notches. So they will lock at different lengths. And you can see here, if you go all the way up, it'll click spring loaded. So right there is one stop and then here is the next stop and then here is the final stop. And they both work the same way as far as the legs go. Another quick thing I wanted to show you is the the screw style. So you can see there's five leg segments so there's four screw adjustments to unlock the legs. And what I like about this style is you can grab them all, turn them all like so, and then you can open them all in one shot. So that's a really nice feature and it makes it easy to get closed and opened quickly. Now there's also spiked feet on these tripods. This one on the smaller tripod, you just have to pop off this rubber foot and there's a spike underneath it. The larger tripod, you actually just turn the foot and a spike actually comes out as you turn it. So that's an interesting feature set there. All right, so on the larger tripod, the Obin CT3581, it comes with a ball head top that is called the BE126T. And that's this guy right here. So let me just back this up a touch here so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Both ball heads are pretty much the same. They're just different in size, okay? So this one's able to support 26.4 pounds. This one's rated at nine pounds, the smaller guy here. So you can see them next to one another like so. They both have the pan knob here for the panos. All right, you can see it here and here. And then they both have the adjustment knob for the ball head itself. Now, these adjustment knobs feel really good. That tripod I reviewed last month um, was much cheaper. It did not feel this good quality. This has no play in it, this knob. It just feel, it tightens and loosens correctly, but there's no knob play. Like the engineering is definitely a higher quality standard on these tripods. And on the bigger tripod, it actually has even more adjustment, which makes it better for a heavier load if you wanna keep it just slightly tight, you know, and you wanna move it around, but you don't want it all the way loose. Now notice on these, they also have double bubble level. So there's one bubble level on the clamp, the tightener knob here for this clamp. And you can see, just look at how this clamps. You see how that clamps? It just squeezes the plate like that. It's a really cool design. And if you turn this down like so, you can see there's another bubble level right here. And they both have the same thing. This one's the same. Just loosen this and show you. So you can see the bubble level is now facing up like so. So while I'm here, you can also get another look at this button here. You can see this button is spring-loaded, all right? And that's how it automatically will step when you're opening it up. It'll go click, 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 click as you, as you move the leg. So you just squeeze that in and then you can bring the leg up. And as you bring it down, it'll lock into the settings as you go. 
Okay, so I just go all the way down and then bring it back up like so. And that's pretty much it. Now let me just show you a little closer the plate here on this guy. All right, I will show you how this mounts. So here is the plate itself. All right, so this is what the tripod plate looks like. And you can see on the bottom, it has that nice little uh, lever there like that swivels so you can tighten it nice and easy. You see that? That's a nice feature. So this goes in like so. You just basically put it in and this is how you get it out. And notice how it has these notches. So that allows it to be just a little bit loose. Like right there, it's loose. So you, it slides back and forth, but it will not come out. So I can't get it out now, but it does still move. It gives you some adjustment. You have to loosen it all the way, and then you can take it out. So I'm just gonna slide it in there and clamp her down. And you can see there just how it clamps closed. All right, you just clamp it down like so. And now this thing is not moving anywhere. That's a really good design in my opinion. I like the way that that plate mounts like that. All right guys, so I got the 3581 here and this is what it looks like. And now again, you can adjust these feet and you can get this lower to the ground like so. If I raise it up to the other notch, now you can see I can actually get it much lower to the ground. So let me just set this up and I'll show you what we're, what we're looking at. So check this out. You just grab all of them at once and you can unscrew them and then they all open up like so. And tighten them down. And that's maximum height. All right, so there we go. And here's the little guy. And you can see just how much smaller. And if we loosen this up, we can raise that guy. Then we could loosen this one up, raise that guy, and there we go. So that's the maximum height, and this is the maximum height for this guy. All right, so that's what we're looking at. Now let me show you what it looks like when we fold these up quick. I'm just going to turn this, turn that, tighten these down, like so. So that's that, and then basically all you do, punch that in, and you can swivel it around. And I like to leave the ball head loose when you fold these up so you can get it nice and compact. Now this does have to be all the way up when you fold it up. So it's gotta be like that. Then you just press this button, swivel it around, and there you go. Now it can't go like this, so you gotta press the button right here, release, and then you swing it around, and there it is. You can just shove it in the bag, like so. You can turn this ball head out of the way, get it nice and compact. It fits right in the bag, no problem. All right, and that's that. It's in the bag. So now this one folds up the same way, but I want to set a camera up on this one first so you can see what it looks like. All right, so let me just lower this down a little bit. Let me get the camera. And I'm just gonna mount the plate to the lens like so, see? And now, let's loosen this a little bit. Swivel that around where I want it. Tighten that. And now, I'm just set this in there like so. Clamp her down, and that's it. It's in there. All right, so now I got the lens mounted here. And you can see here, it's very tight. It's very rigid. It's barely any movement at all. And if you loosen the panel knob, you can then just spin it around like so. And then you could loosen this knob and you could loosen the ball head. So right now I have it kind of tight, so it'll still stay. But you could loosen it more and make it really easy to move as well. All right, and then you could also put this like so by spinning it around. You can turn it like this. And then you can do vertical like that and then you have the bubble level up top. You make your adjustments like so. So it works that, that easy. It's really a, a sweet setup. You just loosen this, take it off, and you just put it back on real easy. That's it. It works really well. All right, so I got the smaller 3535 travel tripod here, and I just want to show you what it looks like taking it out of the bag. And again, the big one also has a bag with a shoulder strap, so that's a nice setup there for sure. Easy to travel. 
Again, these are these are travel tripods, so they're they're both very compact considering their overall size. So this larger one actually goes down to 17 inches when it's going into the bag, okay? And this one's 12. So that is a significant difference in size, but the max height on that is tremendous compared to this one. So, you know, they're they're made for different things. They have different purposes. That one, the larger tripod would be better for sports photography when you're using heavy lenses on the sidelines and you need the tripod nice and tall. Or for wildlife, you're in the field, you need something sturdy and, uh, you know, very more rugged. This one is just ideal for smaller systems, in my opinion, but it's very well made overall, I have to say. So anyways, this is what it looks like when it comes out of the bag, and I just wanted to show you how you open it up. And you hear that click, the, the little button there I was showing you, how it just clicks, snaps into place. There's one, two, three, boom. And then this one, one, two, three, boom. And default, the column's gonna be all the way up, so I'm just gonna lower that down. And it's the column's not all the way up. The column has two sections. So just the one section has to be up in order for it to close compact like that. So you have to have it, you have to have it here, okay, when you when you stow it away. And again, this unit is rated for nine pounds. So I'm gonna show you a little bit closer what it looks like mounting up my Sony A7R with the 50 millimeter F1.4 Rocker X lens. And I actually have a Minolta adapter here. So this is a fully passive manual lens. It's a little bit heavy you know, overall, but still for this tripod, it's, it's well within margin of spec. So I just wanted to show you how I have the clamp mounted. It's mounted in the, you know, vertical position or the horizontal position that way. So I'm just going to show you, it just goes in here like so. So you just slide it in there like that. And then you just turn the knob. Clamps are right down. That's it. It's locked in there. And you can see this unit is really stable as well. And you can make it more stable by spreading the legs out more, you know, and get it lower to the ground but I just wanted to show you a default setup here. So again, it's got the pano knob, so you can loosen that right here, and now you can swivel this sucker around. And also, if you loosen the other knob, the main knob here, this is for the ball head itself, you can have it just so it's a little bit loose, and then you can move it and it'll stay, like right about there. Now I could still move it if I want, but it'll stay where I want it. But what I wanted to show you is how you can put it into a cool vertical panel position really easily. Put it like that, clamp her down, and now you can take panels vertically. You know, you want to make sure it's level, you use the ball level. I'm just kind of doing this, I can't quite see it. <laughs> but somewhere around there, and then you can take these awesome vertical panels, super high resolution. You know, that's the purpose of this panel knob. It really does make it easier. So the last thing I wanted to show you quickly is how you turn this into a monopod. And basically all you do is unscrew this, the bottom of the column, the center column, you screw that off and that comes out like that. Then you can unscrew this knob here to loosen the center column and it just pops right out. See that? So now I got the center column in my hand and it's got the thread on the bottom. So then you just unscrew the leg that unscrews and it's on the smaller one, it's the one with the pad. On the larger tripod, it actually has a thread on the top. It's this guy right here. It actually has the thread, that's the monopod leg. So anyways, you just unscrew this like so and now I got the leg. And all you got to do is connect the leg to the center column. Just threads right on. That's it. Now I got a monopod. How cool is that? And it, it's pretty tall when you unscrew it. It's not crazy tall, but I'll show you what it looks like. Now the larger tripod, uh, the monopod is very tall. It's like 70 inches. So it's almost, it's like just above my head. This one, not so much. So I'm sitting down right now, but you could then extend the center column and get it up to here. Okay, so that's the maximum height. And if I stand up, you can see how tall it is. All right, so it's not really that tall in monopod mode, the smaller tripod. The larger tripod is, however, it's like really tall. So, all right, so just to summarize, what we got here is we got the Obin 3535, and it weighs in at only 2.5 pounds. So it's extremely lightweight, folds up to 12 inches, and it goes as tall as about 54 inches. It also turns into a monopod, and it has a double column here to make it even more compact. It's very well designed. It's got a nice ball head. And again, it goes for $180 from BH Photo. Now, the larger unit is the 3581, and it has a payload of 26.4 pounds versus 9 pounds. So you can put a much larger camera system on this tripod here. Now, this one is quite a bit larger, but it's still ultra compact. It's only 17 inches when it's folded all the way down because it has five leg segments 
which again makes it very compact for travel purposes. This tripod weighs in at 3.9 pounds, which is very lightweight considering its size and payload limit. And you could win these tripods. You can have a chance at winning either one of these tripods. Check out the link below for my giveaway video because BH Photo was kind enough to give these tripods to me and I'm gonna give them away. So there's a, a separate video for the giveaway. So the link is below for that video. Check that video out and that'll explain to you what you need to do if you wanna win one of these tripods. But at the end of the day, these are really high quality units for the money. And if you look at the competition, like Manfrotto, Gitzo, and like more of the mainstream brands, they're way more money in general when you're looking at carbon fiber. The Gitzo equivalent to this is like $1,000, for example. You know what I'm saying? So again, you gotta weigh out the features and the quality and things like that. That is pretty much it for this review, guys. I really hope you got what you were looking for. Be sure to check out that giveaway video. And also, please subscribe and make sure you check that notification icon next to the subscribe button. Below the video in the description area, I'll have all the links, okay? The link to the giveaway video, the link to these tripods on BH Photo, and a bunch of other links that are pertinent will also be in the description area, just like on all my videos. I will catch up with you guys next time, and stay tuned because I have the Sony a7 III and the Zeiss Battis 18mm and the Zeiss Battis 85mm coming. BH Photo was kind enough to send me that equipment to review. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will catch up with you next time. Take care.